All right, on with the show. I'm uh, really happy to uh, I'm really happy to announce uh, our next uh, speaker, um, uh, Rock, who is uh, working at uh, Mozilla. Uh, and I'm especially happy because uh, Rock actually happens to be the person uh, that sort of gave me a kickstart um, uh, to Nix quite some years ago when he was uh, he doesn't even remember when he was running a, a hackathon in Berlin. Um, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but today, um, he's of course not uh, here to talk about that, but he is here to talk um, about his experiences uh, introducing Nix at uh, Mozilla, uh, and especially um, uh, things that uh, we should uh, uh, consider to make the experience of using and getting into Nix uh, better. So uh, give him a small round of applause. Rock! November 9, 2004. Who can give me a guess what this date stands for? I am the hint. I was not born at that time. <laughs> Good. Exactly, so Firefox 1.0. Um, what this tells us, right? So Firefox code base is old. Um, I mean, it gets updated, it gets modernized, but they are traits of old architecture and design. Uh, and so goes with all the release services, release practices, and re um, release tools that come with it. So there, are, there is a bit of, um, you have to listen to the elders uh, when you come uh, at uh, the position I am and learn from them. Um, Six million, three hundred thousand, and a bit more. It's a number of tasks which we, uh, from our Firefox CI that we ran in September, <laughs> previous month. Um, to kind of put it differently, which is, uh, this is a, it's just a number how many tasks we ran, but um, to put it in um, compute hours, this is 227 years of compute hours. Um, so this says that we are doing a lot of building. Um, this means also running the tests, uh, verifying that the tests ran successfully, the um, chain of trust and all of this that we verified at the end product and that 80 megabytes that you download, um, depends uh, which version, but the, the final product that you download, it's as safe as possible, as safe as we can make it. Um, so we are quite busy. Um, 265 uh, is the number, now don't hold me by the exact number, but it's roughly around there, uh, the number of releases which happened this year, which are the human-assisted uh, uh, human assisted releases, where humans were involved, QA was involved, and this is only Firefox. This is ex excluding nightlies. These are automated. They just, whatever lands, it goes out at the, the same day, or twice a day, I think, even. Um, so there is a lot of, we have in place processes and you can see that we are releasing every day. So if this is true, we will reach 300, which means almost every day we ship a release, um, even on weekends. Um, but it's not true because we ship multiple a day. Um, so I'm Rogarbas. Uh, I would like you, I'm release engineer um, at Mozilla. Uh, today I'd like to show you um, or try to explain how, make, how to make Nix a bit more pleasant experience to use, at least the tricks I think worked, uh, and also things which I tried and didn't work or uh, we could improve upon, right? So which I'm certainly, I will write RFCs after this. Um, uh, so at Release Engineering, um, we use Nix, uh, not in a big capacity. We have so surrounding services uh, of our build system and our build pipeline. There are a few surrounding services which we uh, Nixified. Uh, I was the main protagonist when I joined Mozilla, so I, uh, I'm quite, I was quite excited that I was given the opportunity to do so. Um, and that's... Um, w the, this will be more lessons learned uh, while doing so. Um, and in order to do so, 
I would like to first start with a bit short introduction, just what we do, who is the what kind of team it is, what are our fears, the desires, and uh, so that you know where we're coming from, what are our tools as well, um, so that you will have a better understanding of um, our limitations, our uh, uh, thought process. So with that in mind, let's start. Um, we are a team, Release Engineering is a team of 13 people, and release engineering, you would say, uh, a lot of people don't understand um, what we actually do. Um, in a, we are scattered all over the place of the release pipeline, which means w once the code lands, uh, is it, did it land it correctly? C do we need to verify? We don't do actually QA, but we need to communicate with QA that it fits the pipeline. Uh, the release pipeline afterwards once the code lands. So we are in every place, but we are not expert in particular subject. So being 13 people uh, is not, uh, it's a lot, but it's not a lot uh, in terms when, uh, when, you, when you have so many products and so quick release cycles. Um, we do our process, uh, we do a train releases, so every six weeks, roughly six weeks, we do a release, this means Every six weeks, we have three branches or repositories. We have Mozilla Central, beta, and release. Every, three, uh, every six uh, weeks, uh, merge happens, and then all the versions shift down. So if beta was, beta was just yesterday uh, 63, and now it's 64, because um, the merge day was yesterday. So, um, and this means that once something lands in the Mozilla Central, it takes uh, two times six weeks uh, to be uh, in release if it passes the QA and everything. So the tool we use, uh, m the, the tool we use the most, uh, and it's kind of the which I want to mention is the test cluster. Test cluster is our CI developed in uh, at Mozilla um, before we were using uh, Buildbot. Um, there are reasons why we start, uh, why we wrote uh, Task Cluster. Um, just the story is too long for this short talk. Um, it's open source, uh, and soon it's you will be even able to install it, apart from us. Uh, no, it's it's just a matter of priorities. So we need firstly something running that we can use, that we can, um, but then uh, it's intended to be used uh, also by others. Um, our main language, we, we use all our infrastructure and all the glue code uh, and our even build system is Python. Um, uh, so this is our main uh, choice. Uh, so you can see that we, um, those six million tasks come from our test cluster. Uh, so if you're in that range of capacity, you might start considering um, looking into that area, especially uh, once the, the bundles, which can, uh, can easily install um, test cluster, will be available. Um, I'll start with number one uh, of the things I, l I almost observe now that I've uh, been here for the whole day. Uh, it's one common thread that everybody's employing, and the ones who don't, they should. Uh, when they start working on a project with Nix and they try to introduce it to their colleagues or maybe even on a lander scale. And this is not the kebabs, but it's the wrapping. Nix, is, the tool in itself, is completely, uh, works completely fine, but it takes a bit of time to get used to it. Uh, what you want to do uh, is bring the, pro the, 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 the domain problem as close as possible um, to your um, colleagues. This means that while Nix shell and Nix build and all these tools, they do co uh, do correct job, you still want to fetch some secrets from your company uh, company's place where you store secrets. Um, you have your own CI. So there are these little things which it's very easy to abstract and wrap and have a tiny wrapper. I'm not talking about re-implementing the whole Nix. A tiny wrapper between... Um, executing three commands in the bash and just making a nice UI. And it really takes a long way. It goes a long way. So next time you come into Berlin, we'll have kebab nicks. Um, 
but how could this look like? And this is actually a tool we also uh, wrote. Um, <laughs> so the tool is called Please, uh, for the lack of better name. Um, so when, when you want to start developing, um, you basically say please shell and you will en and you enter the name of the project. Usually there are multiple projects. So you enter a shell, you run a project, and you run the tests of a project, and you deploy a project. And what happens behind those um, commands, uh, it's up to you. Now, you don't have to call please. Um, it can be uh, your company name or something similar. Uh, but the idea is this is quite common scenario. And um, the onboarding uh, when your colleagues come is going to be much smoother uh, because once they know how to deploy one project, they know how to deploy all the projects. Um, next important thing, I think this is one of the this is one of the key reasons why Nix, by my opinion, uh, why Nix is not so um, widely adopted. I think this is like the first. I mean, there are many reasons, but this is the first uh, big one, which I th think it's. Um, when I started introducing Nix, the first thing was, what do you do when you finally convince somebody and they, they, they have time to use Nix? They try to install it. It's not so easy. Um, there are multiple ways how to install it. Um, while choices are good, giving beginners choices is not good. Um, once you install Nix, and let's say you install it, you figure it out that in our setup, we require in multi-user mode, and it has to have a sandbox enabled. Um, there is no way uh, I could enforce this in our in my Nix file to kind of say, like, these are the properties. Uh, there might be, actually. Um, you can read the Nix conf. Not sure. Uh, but yeah, um, saying. Th there is more to, com to configuring Nix than just installing it. Uh, might be your custom binary caches and things like that. So while this can be all wrapped in the script, um, like the first experience in uh, while installing Nix is not that great. Um, for, but we must remember that this is ex uh, going three years back and looking the how it's now, it's much better. Like I can see already the big, big, big improvements uh, on the stability of the installer. Um, but both of my managers, which are uh, kind of, how do I say, above or in my tree structure, uh, they both failed to install um, Nix. Um, let's say the last in incident was, I think it was in May, when for two, three days, there was actually Nix install script was broken, so the curl wasn't working. Um, I know this was like bad propaganda, but um, it happened. So I lost that moment of, um, hey, finally I could get somebody else on Nix. Um, but I'm almost ready to. So uh, why what I did to kind of circum uh, to kind of go around this problem is the Docker. Um, so stuff the things in Docker. So the nice thing about Docker is that. Uh, somebody else put the effort of documenting how to install it. It works on all platforms. Um, and you can run Nix in it um, easily. So that's what we are doing. So whenever you run please shell, it will, this please is actually a bash script which runs itself in a Docker container. And then based on the environment, because we detect it, it will um, um, do what it's supposed to do. So it will execute on the deployment or enter the shell when you are in, um, when you run it from the inside the Docker environment. So uh, this way we also configured the whole Docker environment. So which, um, uh, to which secrets you have access to, to which, um, not secrets, uh, binary caches you have access to. So this kind of sorts all of these problems. Uh, it even makes it possible to use it in, um, in Windows. Uh, so there, that's while uh, being an, uh, quite having an open source policy, uh, kind of being open first at Mozilla, this is important because a lot of our contributors are actually coming uh, uh, from Windows platforms. 
Um, so we put the Nix inside and uh, everything is, it, it's okay. We are happy with the current solution. Um, next feature, which is quite often forgotten, and I think Nix, here's where Nix really shines, is uh, mono versus multi repo. Um, I think Nix was made to solve this problem. Um, whenever, because uh, then there is almost no debate whether it's a mono or multi repo, um, because both sides have cons and pros, right? So, what the good side of the mono repo is if you have, let's say, three projects which closely collaborate and they're closely connected, it's quite easy to have them in one project and quickly iterate, right? But then once they are kind of more, kind of reach the maintenance level, it's nice to just let them uh, to be on their own and whenever the update is needed or some feature is missing, uh, you can only pull that repository. So there are pluses and minuses, right? Um, with Nix, you can actually have this top repository uh, from which you deploy. You know exactly the state you're in, and then you refer to another repository. So in that sense, the, you, are, you are doing a mono repo, but you you're using actually multiple, you can use multiple repositories when project is in a maintenance mode or when needed, or when certain team prefers to work in their separate repository. So you can have both with Nix. Um, yeah, and having top repository, which includes everything, it's a nice way where you can um, check between services, um, basically run git blame, um, git bisect, and figure it out where those tricky uh, problems uh, occur in the whole deployment. So it's also one thing, one nice uh, side effect. Um, one thing, the, so the next thing, which you should basically check first before you um, even start considering using Nix is, is your language supported in Nix? Um, so how do you go about this? So you open the Google, you browse, well, DuckDuckGo, you browse um, your language to Nix, uh, and hopefully you'll get the result. Um, don't look for this information on nixos.org. Um, it's some of the, maybe there is a mailing list, but we see that it, we kind of hurt ourselves by not exposing these tools because uh, when somebody comes with a project, they usually come from a background JavaScript, um, Haskell, and they was like, okay, how do I bootstrap my project? Um, and if your language does not have this, it's gonna be quite rough road. You can partially um, Nixify your project, the rest, um, yeah, it's more of a manual work from there on, like, uh, like before. Um, so, luckily, we have a lot of uh, two Nix tools. Uh, some work better, some work less. Uh, I'd like to maybe just uh, shout out to Yarn to Nix uh, by for the design it has, where you don't have to run a command. So uh, to actually produce the output, uh, but you'll use existing log files which Yarn produces. And then the integration, then the, 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 the friction, uh, friction between um, development team which wants to use Yarn, uh, is, uh, there is much less friction between the dev team which wants to use Yarn and uh, release management which needs to package everything because Nix and Yarn log file are already in sync. And there are also other Tunix tools which do this. Um, I'm just trying to kind of bring out that this is the nicest way uh, to work with uh, these Tunix tools. And true, not all languages also support these log files or have enough metadata in those log files so that we can create this kind of Tunix tools. Uh, but this is really important. If you don't have this, you will be in a, a lot of trouble or you have time to write them, which is also nice. Um, one nice thing is, if this is quickly, you can overdo it. The next uh, topic I'm trying to uh, explain is overlays. Um, overlays are nice, but don't overdo them. 
uh, like me, um, you can quickly get excited and we'll put this in a box here and this in a box here and this is how it's going to be connected. Um, but you, uh, there is, I would say, in your company, you should have a layer for your company, uh, which builds certain tools, certain versions of tools, which are used in your company. And every developer should kind of have access uh, to that overlay. Then you have per project, and I think that's where it kind of ends. You don't have to go really in more in the detail of uh, building more and more overlays. Um, otherwise, I mean, it's a nice picture, but uh, it gets crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, the next one, introducing Nix. Uh, I, you probably noticed I asked many questions in today. Uh, how did you introduce Nix? What was the reaction? What was the experience? Uh, what I noticed is that it's a cultural shock, um, especially because our team is used to uh, Python and object-oriented design. Uh, we, when we combine code, we use inheritance in Python, mostly, uh, over um, uh, composition. So just this shift is a big um, kind of alert for somebody trying to learn. Um, and as whenever you will try to introduce a functional language, you will face this. Uh, this basically means going to somebody which, is, uh, which spend the last 10, 20 years learning about object-oriented uh, object uh, uh, programming and saying, uh, yeah, the, the, no, this is better, <laughs> right? Um, it's going to be uh, um, not accepted well. So um, what I suggest here is be prepared. There is going to be chances where people um, are frustrated with their current tools, and you have to be ready then to step in and ask them, this is an alternative. Uh, this is how I came to Nix. I was frustrated with Python uh, package management. I uh, still am, but <laughs> uh, I came to Nix, and it solves most of it, right? Um, a, a lot of stories I heard were I was struggling. Uh, there is nothing better, and I came. So, But it's important that when that moment comes, uh, the tools which you use in a company need to be packaged in Nix. Uh, the, uh, the, at least the bootstrapping, the first uh, default Nix or shell.nix should be already there in place so they can give, get a quick feel of it. They won't switch in the first day, but you need to get them, but you need to be prepared. And this moment will never happen during the week, but it's going to be weekend, I guarantee you. Because um, then that, that's when we have time. Uh, to play around uh, and test new things. So, um, yeah, if anybody knows this band, awesome. B just been in the concert. Um, so, kind of, I added this slide. I mean, it's coming, but um, based on the Ilko's presentation this morning, um, to kind of add on the list of the RFC which we need to do. Um, so when I was preparing this slide, I thought, what are the least am amount of effort that we could put in to get the most of the uh, results? So how to make, in a year, when somebody in a year comes to uh, their boss and says, like, let's use Nix, there is going to be a higher chance that uh, this succeeds. Um, this is com not completely everything, of course, because there are only three points, but I think these are... Um, at least in my experience, uh, I encounter them a lot, these arguments. So first one is Windows support. Um, I know this is uh, in the world where everything is Linux, it's not important, uh, but this is not the case. A lot of times, Nix as a build tool, and if we want to use it as a build tool, is going to be uh, compared against does it has a Windows support. Um, and sadly, we don't have. The good part, why I say, why I put it here is because there is a Windows, whatever the acronym is, um, subsystem Linux, yeah, okay, exactly. Um, that might give us an easier way um, to reach that goal and be able to compile uh, bin uh, uh, Windows executables 
using Mix. Um, it's, I, I know there is a pull request and it was revived just today because it was NixCon, so whoever is working on that, I, I'd love to help. I can only give moral support and beer, or <laughs> preferred. Um, uh, but this is because of other reasons, not because I don't want to help um, time. Um, the next one is, which is, I already kind of hinted it, is Docker in Nix. Um, this should be, this is how people use software today. Um, like it or not, this is how people try software today. It doesn't matter if Nix can be removed without traces and you don't even know it's there. People don't know that. People need to read that, but they know Docker. They know how to install Docker, so you don't have to teach them um, how to install Nix. Nix is going to be there inside the Docker. So while we work on our story of how to install Nix, we can give them a really good story of this first impression and they can start playing in the environment they're used to. Um, this is already happening uh, from the work from uh, Twig uh, recently. This, was, this is all just amazing. Um, but I think this is a, with the minimal amount of effort. So how, uh, as we create our tarball, which is then picked up by the, our curl install script, we could as easily just push Docker image with Nix inside in a sandbox mode in multi-user inst installation, so the hardest of all, right? Um, this would save a lot of uh, man hours um, of pe beginners, right? Um, and the third one, it's not yet there, website. Um, I'm not talking about documentation. Um, I think this is, this is actually the most important one. Maybe I shouldn't put it at the end, but um, I'm not talking about that we need a new design of the website. Um, when I'm away on parental leave soon, um, and my manager again tries to, um, or somebody from our team, or your friend, tries to t learn how to uh, use Nix, it's gonna have a hard time finding the resources. Uh, I know where the documentations are, I can send you the link. Discoverability on the website is very poor. Uh, a lot of content is not there as it should be. Uh, it should not take more than a minute to, to be at the, with the Nix installed and with, few, with an example um, expression written and start playing from there. I'm talking about getting started manual. This is not um, tutorial or short tutorial. So this is not something that it's, um, should be in the manual in such, but it should be something to get people excited that this actually works. Because the worst feeling is when things fail and then you're like, okay, this next doesn't work. Um, I don't have much time, but I'm really willing to work on this um, personally. Um, and there is no easy solution because there are, you know, as many as we are here, there will be different opinions what should be on the website where. Uh, but I think we should start changing it uh, and including more links, uh, exposing the content, doing some testing. It's, you know, show somebody in your company, find me how to install Nix when you come to nixos.org. Nobody knows currently. I would like to change that. Uh, thank you. Um, Alrighty, time for questions. Yes. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my question is about uh, the Docker and Nix support. So um, I, I used to maintain the, the Docker image on the hub, which was mostly when somebody sent me an email, I would update it. Um, and now it's it's kind of automated. If you go to Nix so it's slash Docker, you, you basically just do a pull request. Um, and you can update it, but um, I'm not sure what's really missing, right? I mean, okay, sandbox support, is it, is it really that useful if it's within the, the Docker? Um, if, if there is a reason, we can add that probably very easily. Uh, I agree. Um, Multi-user, yeah, doesn't really fit, so. Um, what, do you, what do you think is missing there, I mean? Okay, um, starting Docker, uh, it shouldn't be Docker file. We should build Nix with Nix. 
So there are support. It's possible already to have Nix Docker image built with Nix. Um, because then we can actually just have it in Hydra and have it as an artifact of the Nix build um, every time we commit. Um, multi -use, uh, sandbox mode, uh, I don't know who would use it without sandbox mode. Um, we just have, personally, if I have a project, I want sandbox mode. I, I explicitly would like to disable somebody using without sandbox mode, if possible. Like, that would be an assertion. Uh, Multi-user, um, why is multi-user in our case, maybe this is not really needed, but in our case, we need it because we have to run, we installed PostgreSQL, and if you want to run PostgreSQL, you need to run it as a different user than root. So and reusing the same image kind of makes sense. Um, so that, that's where I'm coming from. Um, uh, yeah. OK, more questions? Yes. Um, for the third problem, the website, can something like a GitHub created list, like an awesome list, but more structured, uh, can that solve the problem? Um? Um, it's a nice idea. Uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, reasons. Um, imagine a docker.com would be a list of awesome websites. Would you use Docker? Right? It's like, uh, I'm not saying we should be Docker, but. I want that feeling. When you come, you have a getting started. In five minutes, you know you have a successful Nix build. Or you are in Nix shell. So you have something tangible that you can go after 15 minutes uh, and say, like, OK, I will leave this. I will come this to later when I have more time. So having these early, early adopters. Um, I, I like what Domen is doing, where, uh, where, ca where it comes these services with Kashyyyk, uh, Hercules, this is awesome. But we are still stuck with the first phase, somebody actually considering Nix. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is where our conversion rates, wow, I used the big word, uh, actually we lose a lot. More questions? Yes. Um, yeah, so to the same point, for me, like when I, when I made a, um, a, a PR against the manual, I don't remember which one it was, the Nix OS, Nix packages. Um, when I realized that it would only show on the website after six months, that for me, that was like, I was like, wow, okay, I'm not going <laughs> to go through the trouble again. So for me, that was like really something that I felt like that doesn't really help contributors contribute. I think this got improved uh, already, that there is a, a, a kind of unstable, not yet. I, I saw some pull requests or some discussions sur surrounding this where the, un the master documentation it will be available somewhere in the nixos.org. Uh, might be completely wrong, um, but it should be um, yeah, possible. I mean, this is a lot of like, work we should do, I agree, but uh, what, I'm, what I want to point out with the website is not that there has to be a structure, um, like deep nested structure, it's just the front page. To include all the information, which language to Nix tools do we support? List them there. This is important. Uh, give examples how to use those tools. Uh, that's an extra bonus. Um, getting started manual in like five minutes. A Docker image. I think uh, like that would make it easier a lot for my a lot for a lot of my coworkers and friends who I try to convince to use Nix, and they gave up after five minutes of doesn't work. Okay, maybe you've got uh, time for one more question. We've got a question from the internet. We've got a question from the internet. <laughs> That's fantastic. Do, do we have telephones as well? Uh, aren't you afraid that your coworkers will find another solution while you're on parental leave, especially if nobody can help them debug their Nix expressions from <laughs> NBP? Um, this is the fear I'm living with, right? <laughs> no, putting... No, putting this aside, um, like the joke aside, it's a valid question. Um, the next, my, my parenting leave, there is going to be problems. So, uh, sure, I'm going to teach them, sure, I'm going to show them, but uh, it's hard to do this when they're stuck <laughs> with installing next, right? So, um, for me, this is the first goal, and just having, like, uh, the, the documentation, if you read it, it's actually good. Right? But you need to find it. 
right? You need to you need to know that there are three different documentation manuals. Um, I after a year of using Nix uh, and NixOS, I didn't know there is a Nix packages manual, right? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying like the, everything here is done with a good intention, right? Um, I think for a little effort, putting in the front page and gathering these resources and pointing to wiki pages, to the all these tools, we could achieve a lot of uh, better results and being a lot more friendly. Okay, so after this uh, nice question from the internet, uh, let's give Rock another round of applause for his very nice talk. Thank you.